So, hi, David. Uh, thanks for joining us on this. This will be our first uh, video blog post. Um, so, first of all, can you share with us a bit about your current role as the Northwest Regional Enforcement Support Manager within the National, sorry, within the Angling Trust Fisheries Enforcement Support Service? Yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a mouthful. All those acronyms. Totally it? agree. So, uh, I, I've, I've been doing this job since uh, November 2015. Um, so I cover the northwest from the Scottish borders down to the Cheshire. Shropshire borders covering Cumbria, Lanx, Greater Manchester, Merseyside and Cheshire, those regions. A lot, a lot of fisheries, a lot of water in those regions. I'm part-time. I'm based, I, I live in a little village called Norden on, on the tops above Rochdale. Uh, Home-based, um, three and a half, four days a week, although in reality it's more than that because it's my hobby and it sucks you in. Uh, so my role is to assist the other enforcement agents, well, the, the, the two enforcement agencies pertaining to fishing, which is the Environment Agency, their, their fisheries officers, warranted fisheries, fisheries officers, and the, the police who cover the theft act offences pertaining to fishing. Um, I support angling clubs with advice on uh, better securing their waters, better signage. We provide signage. We do education for uh, for anglers, for club bailiffs, Um it's a it's a good role. Um, I am coming to the end of it. I am retiring in another month's time, um, second time round. Um, there's eight of us in the team, the Fisheries Enforcement Support Team, uh, which we'll call FES. Um, we're all retired cops, but we're all keen anglers, so we use that enforcement experience. And we've got, you know, we've got over three hundred year, years uh, enforcement experience between us in lots of different policing areas. Um, so we bounce off each other, and we. We, we use that to try and prevent poaching, uh, theft of fish, antisocial behaviour, fly tipping, even pollution. We, we, we use that experience to try and address those issues, which are perhaps the main issues that affect angling clubs and, and fisheries. Is that, is, does that cover it, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it leads into, so, you know, what initially sparked your interest in fishing and how has that passion evolved over time? Right. Well, I was brought up um, in North Manchester in Middleton um, and I got into fishing when I was about 10 years of age. The only places then, there wasn't a, a, a plethora of um, of commercial fisheries. So it was out of the Rochdale Canal, which I spent a lot of time on, and um, Old Mill Ponds. That that was the basis of my fishing, really. There was nothing in the Irwell, the Roach, um, the, the, you know, the Irk. They were all just open sewers. Uh, so I learned my fishing on the canal by and large. Um, actually appeared in the Manchester Evening News once as a 13-year-old for catching a two-pound roach out of the Rochdale Canal, which was Fabulous. quite a thing, really. Um, yeah. Some some old boy angler was uh, in the next peg down and saw me catch it and come across, and uh, I, I have a, I have a column in the uh, the Manchester Evening News. I forget his name. He's, he's probably dead and buried now. But um, but yeah, yeah. So so that was me. That's what got me into fishing. Uh, I've got a, a grandmother in Moffat in the Scottish border, so I used to go up and stay with her during the school halls and I'd fish the River Annan for trout. Fabulous. Feed the brooks, so I did that myself. Off an uncle there. Um, so my passions these days are probably wild brown trout fishing. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll do a bit of seafood, I'll do anything really. Um, this job's been that busy though that I've, I've, I've really cut back on the angle with, 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 with other things. So it's time to. to Retire for the second time. Retired from the police ten years ago. Um, I'll be retiring from the Angling Trust at the end of April, uh, and I'm going to get back into my fishing. So I might come knocking on your door, Nigel. You never know. Well, you're more than welcome to come and fish our stretches, or even go for a beer. I'm sure well, you know. I'm sure we can organise that. I think you're right, though, that uh, when you get involved in these um, projects, initiatives, your passion for the angling is what gets you there. But it seems to have a a great way of uh, diminishing your ability to go fishing, um. So yeah, I think it's something to to be mindful of. But we do need uh, people like yourselves and 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 volunteers as well to 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 keep everything going. So uh, I think you've you've explained really um how you went from an angler into your current position. So. Uh, if we just lead into more on on the professional side of what you're doing within the with the angling trust, so 
what does a typical day in your role entail? And what are some of the challenges you face in fisheries enforcement? Well, I'll start with the challenges, then I'll, then I'll cover a typical day. The, the challenges, one of the biggest challenges, and I'm not going to go at anglers here because I'm one myself and I totally understand this, but it's angler apathy. Because the number of times I get told, well, I've, I've reported it to the EA, I've reported to the police and now it gets done. So what's the point in reporting it? If we don't report, uh, it, 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 it's never happened as far as the police or the EA are concerned. It's got to go on their databases. So that's my biggest challenge, getting anglers to report stuff. Mm. Um, we, I, I run a team of volunteer bailiffs, the Voluntary Bailiff Service, VBS, probably people know it as. Um, and we've got some fantastic members. We really have. They all give up the time for nothing. They get a bit of training and support, uh, and they have access to a secure website online. Uh, and they put their patrol posts on there, covering where they've been from and to any anything they've seen, anything of note. If there's something serious, it, it, it gets upgraded to an incident. I look at it first thing in the morning when I get up and last thing at night before I go to bed. If there's something, and we've had all kinds of stuff on there, I won't go into the details, but we have an intelligence manager called Gary Thomas, another retired cop. Um, and we put what's called sanitised intelligence through to the police and the environment agency it's all um, reviewed it's all on a secure cgsm uh, email system the police won't accept it if it wasn't done in the right format and, and we do that um that has helped uh, the ea and the police to, to put focus on certain problem areas what we call hotspot areas i think that's probably one of our biggest achievements since we started eight years ago uh, VBS are the main feed for that, but I get phone calls from people as well who, who just out of frustration will call me. Uh, my contact details are on the Angling Trust website under enforcement. People can get hold of me through through that. Um, VBS, uh, I think, is is a great thing. I will stay on as a VBS member when I retire. Uh, I do believe in it. Um, we're there to you know be eyes and ears for anglers, for the EA, for the police to, to point out where the problems are. Anglers are the guardians of the rivers, you know that. They, they see everything. Uh, they see pollution, they see poaching, they see signs of poaching or pollution. Um, and, and we've got challenges, let's be honest. We, we have got challenges. But my VBS members will put reports in on, on all those things. They'll put reports in on avian predation. Um, and with I'm there to support clubs, really. I if, if a club wants me to go and visit in person, I will do. I'll have a walk around with the, the members of the club, the bailiffs, the committee members, whatever. Um, we can provide free signage. Up the west coast of England, uh, most of the clubs, sorry, most of the police forces are signed up to something called Operation Leviathan. We have signs of Operation Leviathan, quite big yellow signs. As long as you've got the landowner's permission, you can put them up. They're a great deterrent. We also, uh, within the uh, Fisheries Enforcement Support Services, we have a project called Building Bridges, which Janusz Kanzik runs. Janusz is a, a Polish national who's been in this country for well over 10 years now. Fantastic lad. Um, he is, uh, his main job is engagement and education of the migrant angling community. They come over here, sometimes there's a language barrier. There certainly was with Janusz when he first came over to London several years ago. Uh, the angling laws in this country, as you know, Nigel, are quite complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, um, depends on what species, it depends on the local bylaws. Uh, yeah, you need a rod license, but there's two different types. If you've got a language barrier and you're unfamiliar, coming into this country and trying to adhere to that law can be difficult. Yeah, there are some people who will take the proverbial. Um, far, you know, after that education and, and integration comes enforcement. Um, so so that's what we're about really we're about trying to make the fishing world better trying to make it um, uh, more understandable to migrant anglers integrating them into clubs into the tradition you know yourself in this country uh, traditionally and, and it's still the case coarse fish it's sport fishing they go back in uh, unharmed uh, over on the continent particularly eastern Europe the, the, the culture there quite deeply ingrained is to fish for the pot. So anything, a carp, a, a tench, whatever, would go in the stew back home or, or, or whatever. And changing that culture, it, it can be quite difficult. Rightly so, 
local anglers um, get get very upset when they when they see a Eastern European angler perhaps uh, abusing that. So so building bridges, I think we've made a difference there. There's not quite the rhetoric that they once was. Some of it was quite racist on social media. I'm not saying there isn't a problem still. There is, but we're we're, we're working on that. Um, so DBS members and, and Building Bridges members work closely together on that. Um, we have fisheries enforcement workshops. We used to do them once a year in person. Um, I used to do them in, in the Northwest and we used to get big audiences, 50, 50 plus people. Um, we do it online now. Uh, again, anglingtrust.net, our website, it's all on there. All the links are on there. They're all advertised on there. Um, and we also do a lot of webinars now, uh, various different topics. Um, so again, this is all on our, on our website. I would just just have a, a flick through it when you've got a few minutes and you'll see all the different, um, it, it'll take you a couple of hours to read through it all, there's that much on it. But if you take the time, you'll find some good topics and stuff explaining. We are currently, um, we've just renewed our contract with the Environment Agency. So uh, we're on a four year contract, which expires at the end of April this year. Um, negotiations took a little bit longer this year for various reasons. So it's just been confirmed a couple of weeks ago. We are getting another four year contract with them. We smashed all our targets in the past. So I wasn't surprised when we got it again. Um, we're gonna be increasing our VBS numbers. Currently we're about 650, creeping up to 700. Um, we're gonna double that to 1400 over the term of this next contract, which will be quite a big thing because there's a lot of work involved in the training and engagement uh, with these people. So if, if people are interested, you go onto our website, look under the enforcement tab, and you'll see the application tab at the bottom of, 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 of the sheets on that. Um, we're doing a role in recruitment, so you know you should hear from us within weeks of putting an application in. It's a very simple application, it takes 10 minutes. I think, well, speaking to the couple of VBS people that I know, there seems to be quite a good community. It's not just a case of being on your own. There's a community there for to to, to create new, new new angling friends. Yeah, um, there is. There is. Yeah. And, and obviously, uh, one of the things that as, as anglers and angling community we're always um, berating is, you know, the drop in enforcement officers from the, the, the EA. We're really fortunate, I think, that... Um, with Damien and, and and Darren in the Ribble and Calder catchments, uh, but uh, th that's just two people, um, so they need need the support to be able to uh, do what they they do exceptionally well. Yeah, they do. The the good people, um, like a lot of big organisations, and you know, I, I worked in one. I worked in the Met for for several years, and I worked in in GMP. Uh, the frontline staff generally are pretty good um but the ea you know you look at their funding over the last 15 10 15 years it's been slashed massively um the fisheries enforcement officers the warranted officers the ones who go out and ask for your fishing license and and and, and deal with that kind of stuff they've been reduced by more than 50 percent. i would say mm -hmm. um i don't think i'd get any argument from the ea on those figures so you've got for instance in the the northwest is split into two environment agency fisheries teams. You've got Cumbria and Lanx in the northern part of the, the of the northwest. And then you've got GMMC, Greater Manchester, Merseyside and Cheshire. And I might be corrected on this, but I think both of those teams have got approximately seven officers each. When you think of all the waters and fisheries in that area, it's a lot of ground to cover, a lot of ground to cover. And they don't just go around checking rod licenses. That's probably maybe 15, 20% of their, 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 their jobs. They do surveys, they do all kinds of stuff. Um, you, you're right, on the Ribble catchment, Damien and, uh, and Darren are excellent fisheries officers. They're fully committed. I've, I've worked a lot with them. I've learned a lot from them. Um, and, I, and I back them 100% really. Um, other areas, you know, the GMMC has got some really good officers as well. Um, they all work quite closely with, but there's not enough of them. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's a, Perhaps it's a political question, isn't it, regarding funding for, or, or maybe it's a it's a question higher up the, the, the chain in the EA where, where they put their funding. Um, you know, fisheries crime, how big is it compared to um, other environmental crimes? How big is it compared to pollution? Stuff like that.
Yeah, it's a, diffi- it's a difficult one. And I suppose sometimes you've just got to concentrate on your own controllables. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't argue to try and create betterment. And I think that's where Ribble Fisher is, is, is that we're trying to work with what we've got, uh, but we're trying to present a case to try and create betterment work where we think it's it's needed. So um, I don't think I don't think we've just covered this particular point. So how does actually the VBS work in conjunction with the Environment Agency and the police uh, to enforce the fisheries regulations? I'm thinking specifically within the Ribble uh, catchment. Uh, I know that uh, Lancashire Police have got quite a uh, what appears uh, nationally t- as a s- section to be quite a largeable um number of staff so just wondering for the listeners how that all f- just fits together to take say a prosecution forward well we don't have any powers uh, volunteer bailiffs do we, we can't if i come across you fishing on the river i can't ask for your license i've no powers some of our members are club bailiffs and they can ask for your club license and if it's written into the club rules can ask for an ea license it wouldn't stand up in court though the, the request for an EA license because it's only warranted officers that can ask for that. So it's police officers, special constables, EA warranted officers, and increasingly uh, police community support officers. Um, we do a course now, we do a training course and several forces. It needs the author- author- authorization of the chief constable of that particular force area. Wiltshire have done it and several others have done it. We uh, we keep pushing it, and hopefully in the northwest, maybe um, you know they'll, they'll adopt it. Um, he'll grant the powers. We'll do the training for them. Um, to get back to your question, I went off at a bit of a tangent there, didn't I? Um, VBS. It all goes back to our reporting website, really, because that creates the hotspot areas. That creates the intelligence. On the back of that, if we request, you know, if we think there's a, a problem area. And um, I can give you a, a classic example, really, which is Carmel Dam. Uh, a bit politically sensitive, this one, because um, a few months ago, we started to get some problems there. We set lines and fish traps. And uh, it was, the finger was pointed by some some members of the club there. I think it's um, St. Helens, isn't it? Um, yes. Got yeah. that. Um, the, the hotel there on the banks was um, taken over by the Home Office and was accommodating accommodating um, asylum seekers. Um, so we tried. I approached the hotel to try and get in there with building bridges and do some education work. Uh, they weren't too keen on that. Um, we did a high profile patrol there um, with the club. Um, the EA backed us up on that. The police didn't come to that one, but they were there to come if, if we needed them, if you know what I mean. They were only a phone call away. Uh, and the problem has massively reduced, really. But because of the phone calls I was getting, because of the uh, reports some of our VBS members were putting in, we identified that problem. I went and presented to the club bailiffs one night uh, about the be- best methodology for reporting, um, You know how politically sensitive it was, um, language barriers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that that's that's one example. Other examples you mentioned the Ribble. There's a free stretch on the Ribble which is you know fishing really well, just down from the motorway bridge there. Uh, a lot of good anglers use it, but unfortunately, it attracts some that that perhaps uh, I don't like using the term anglers because because some of them aren't. They just litter everywhere. That they they abuse the place. Um, we do regular litter picks there. Uh, Damien and Darren have helped us with that. Um, we do regular patrols there, do the signage there. Right. Again, Damien and Darren help us with that all the time. Um, and intelligence, we put a lot of intelligence in on that section when stuff has been, you know, naughty, when stuff's been going off on there. Uh, people poaching salmon, pe- people uh, taking fish for the pot, um, off road motorbikes, um, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, so those those are two examples. These these loads I could give you, Nigel. Really, we do. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, I think it just highlights the importance of what you were saying from the beginning. Reporting, yes. um, I mean, it's something that that I notice is the amount of litter picks that you do uh, as a collective, and that's you know again, it's commendable from the angling community to go and pick up other people's rubbish. Um, 
it is something that I've I'm trying to push vulnerable fisheries to the local ward councillors. Um, and although I am getting a response, I wouldn't say it's a positive response, and that's a that that is a frustration. So it's fabulous that that uh, the likes of yourselves and the VBO, sorry, VBS community, along with you know the environment uh, officers like Damien, etc., are actually out there picking up the slack that actually should be covered by others. So again, it just shows the the importance and value to uh, to the Angling Trust to develop that community and keep it going. Yeah, I think we are quite good at that. I mean, we have the anglers against litter, we have anglers against pollution, um, and, and we have separate teams, separate from, from the FES that, that push that as well. We work closely with them, so it's always a joint effort. Um, yeah, we've done some fantastic litter picks over the years. We did one on the uh, Welling Bury, and we, we had about 100 yards of um, mainly fly tip. Um, so we, we kind of try and point the, the local authority in the right way. Mm -hmm. Some local authorities are better than others at dealing with it, but it's one of the big problems for remote fisheries. You know, the approach roads are often tipped on, the riverbanks are tipped on. Um, it, it, it can be a problem, really. Um, mm -hmm. We've got the Water Quality Monitoring Network uh, scheme as well which is which is going great guns. yeah i mean this is something that i'm you know been pushing i know with chris kent um yeah. from the angling trust um and we're trying to develop that across the the ribble catchment um i know the, the syndicate that i'm directly involved with we know we're pushing that on the darwin and i know the clubs that are looking at on the darwin and the hodder and what we're trying to do now is to get one of our members uh, Alan Davis, who's kindly agreed to be the coordinator for that, because we've got, we've got, for example, we've got the the Angling Trust at water monitor monitoring, we've got the Fly Life, potentially we've got um, Smart Rivers, um, and 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 so we've got the armory now um, to be able to highlight uh, issues working with the Angling Trust, with the local uh, Rivers Trust, because um, they've got a great setup with system science as well, bringing all those bodies together, then building in with the EA, you know, we do have the mechanism and the structure to hold the likes of United Utilities to account. And obviously, I mean, even uh, when this is being filmed on the 25th of, um, or 28th even, 28th of, of March, Yesterday was obviously the big press release day of the amount of uh, combined sewage spills in right. in, in our rivers, uh, which is, you know, quite frankly, a, a travesty. Um, but again, as you, as you said earlier, anglers with the eyes and ears, and, and if we can't protect it, who is going to protect it? So I think that's a, another great initiative that we can develop and work and, and 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 work with United Utilities. I've got a couple of examples personally where when we have gone to them and expressed specific problems, um, they have been trying to help. Well, they they put their hand in the pocket fairly recently, mm -hmm. uh, Nigel. They brought in a team of what they call river rangers. Now, their role is to clean up the, the river system, um, particularly after sewage spills, because we know we get um, all kinds of nasties coming into the undergrowth and stuff like that. But they've done quite a few litter picks with us. Um, I've had several meetings with them. Um, good people trying to trying to rectify wrongs of the past. It's not their fault that United Utilities have, have got a bad history of, of sewage spills that all the water companies throughout England mm -hmm. have. Um, I'm not going to get on my high horse about it, you know. Um, I let Fergal Sharkey do all of that, but but I, I agree with everything he says, really. And the water management is really important. It's something that, as Ribble Fisheries, we will be addressing and 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 trying to get more information out to the local angling community, which is the horse cause water uh, relief program, which is for those that aren't aware, it's a, a huge infrastructural program which is to enhance water supply from Hawes Water through to North Manchester. And that's going to have critical impact or potentially disastrous impact on both the Hodder and the the, the Ribble uh, 
So it's in, it seems important that we do have a robust monitoring scheme. What I will just add very quickly on regards to the HARP, what I can say is that before the commencement of works, with the help of the Ribble, Ribble Fisheries, uh, River, the Rivers Trust, uh, the Hodder Consultative, the Environment Agency, uh, Smart Rivers, um, I think I did mention United Utilities as well, we are being able to great, build a good benchmark for us to work with. So there's some real positive things happening. It's not all doom and gloom. No, you know, we can always drive to, to, to the doom and gloom. And we should look at the, 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 the problems and see how we can make things better. But we should also be aware of the good things that we're doing, which I think we've highlighted a lot on this this call. So just to bring it to 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 do a bit. So you've you've mentioned that about your uh, keenness for trout fishing and the background uh, of fishing in the Manchester area, and I'm sure some of the rivers that have improved drastically from when you were a child or a younger person fishing. Also, a river that I fish quite a lot, the Annan. So when you go into retirement, what specific plans and goals uh, related to angling are you excited about? Well, the first thing, Nigel, is, is the wife's list, which is about 30 items long, all bullet pointed. That's going to take me a good few months. So you could be going for a third retirement. Well, you, you never know, do you? You never know. But I just want to uh, get back into it a bit more. Um I mean, some of the rivers where I am, you know, the rope just got some fine trout in it. There was a 14 pound wild brownie pulled out a couple of years ago. 14 pounds. 14 pounds. Wow. I'll send you a photograph afterwards. Unbelievable. Yeah. On a pike lure, right? Um, we've got we've got Little Britain Anglers, who, who um, a, a, a local club in, in Radcliffe, Eric Owen runs that, and they've got a stretch of the uh, well. When I was a kid, as I, as I, I, I you know, alluded to before, it was an open sewer. Seeing those rivers recover is fantastic. It's just, it's, it's you know, it's two steps forward and one step back, unfortunately. I, I think the trend is still going up compared to what they were. But, you know, um, th there are a lot of pollution incidents. It's all old industrial land, so there's lots of old drains and, and stuff going in there, um, you know. We have problems with unauthorized car washes and the foam that goes in from that. Um, you you know, in the salmon world, you, you get agricultural pollution, don't you? You know, um, up higher up on the river and stuff. So we've just got to be switched on to it. And we've got to keep reporting it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it, it it's a positive. I went down to work in London in the Met in eighty three, and I came back up here in ninety. And I think that period I was away when I was fishing down there on, on, on the Thames and what have you, the rivers really did increase uh, here and, and the fish stocks started to uh, increase massively. Um, I, I'll, I'll go out on the River Roach with a with a small rod and just try and uh, get a few. I'll even go on my local brook and try and get a few, uh, which is only a couple of feet wide, but if you if you do it right and you're stealthy enough, you can catch them. Uh, and that's what we're doing, really. It, you're it, like it, Mr Crabtree all again. Yeah, it is. It is. It's great, isn't it? and I, I fancy getting into pike pike fishing. I mean, I've done pike fishing in the past, but I've done it on the fly, and I quite fancy yeah. a bit of pike fish, fishing on the on the fly. Yeah, My colleague uh, Paul Thomas, who covers uh, the East Midlands, is massive on it. Right, he's promised to give me a, a bit of tutoring and, and sorting out. So, so I'll get into that as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting any younger, so, you know, fortunately, I'm still mobile and everything, so that's what I want to get into. Well, from what I'm told, there's some clonking pike on the lower ribble, so uh, you might yeah. have to there. One of my VBS members, um, Rebecca, Rebecca of Curia, pulled out a 21-pound pike out of there the other week, a um, couple of weeks ago. It was as big as her. She's, she's not the biggest person in the world. Fantastic condition, Obviously. really healthy fish. I, I think the ribble is under undervalued as a pike fisher. I think that's the one thing from a, a fishery perspective that we're blessed with. We've got such a diverse species, um, particularly when you go below Dinkley, Brit Dinkley. Um, there's such a, an array. Um, I was only listening the other week, or somebody was telling me that one of the national uh, anglers, you know, who has I think the record for 
for a, a day. You know, he was targeting the, the the ribble before the the close the close season started, and he's traveling over from you know the the, the east side of the country. People are coming in. It's we're, we're blessed to have such a um, a river that can can provide such sport. But also be such an asset to such a wide community. The, you know, the footfall. We we talk so much about participation, and from a natural asset that's there, the participation is fantastic and something that we should hold dear. And and why we're doing the water te testing, why we're working with different partners, why you've got volunteers on the bank. It's we're all there to be passionate, and if we all put just a little bit in. We'll get in, in an improvement, and, and and long may that continue. You know, little improvements. So just just as we come to an end now, I mean, you've said you're retiring, uh, so obviously there's going to be a vacancy. So what advice would you give to someone considering a career in fishery management or enforcement or in a similar field? Well, fishery management, I'm not an expert on, to be honest. All I would say on that is you've got to be you've got to be an ang you've got to be interested in angling and fish, haven't you? Really, um, fishery enforcement. Uh, I think you need an enforcement background um, to do this job um, pro properly, really. But you also need to have that passion for angling. Um, if someone was, uh, you know, had that background and wanted to to look at my job, you know, there'd be a full handover done. Um, there's a great team who would support you. Um, really, you know, we work as a team. We have a meeting every Monday morning online like this. Um, I'm down in the Midlands for the meeting next month, uh, planning the new EA contracts and the requirements for that. Um, so you get plenty of support. Um, when I started, this was all new. Uh, you know, there was no footprints in the snow. It was just all new. And we had to work closely as a team to, 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 to direct. We still do work very closely as a team. Nino, uh, my boss, um, he, he he's excellent. Um, he, we've got him into fishing. He wasn't an angle when he first started, really. Um, but but now, yeah. I, I should perhaps just mention before I go, and I, I, I could have mentioned it on one of the previous questions, but, um, but I failed to. But one of the big things that we do do in the North West, and, and it's been rolled out nationally now, is training... Fisheries crime related training for police officers. So um, on the 22nd of this month, uh, the other Friday, um, Fir Tree Fishery at Appley Bridge, which is a commercial fishery, a very good one. It's also a CIC fishery. Martin, the owner, gave us his facilities for free for the day because he believes in what we're doing. Fabulous. So, so we had um, Lance Police Rural Task Force. Uh, there a lot of new members there we had british transport police some from up from london and we had some officers from cumbria and the when i've done fisheries crime related training to police forces before with the ea we're doing judge with the ea so damien and darren were there um we used to do it by powerpoint and i'd always start off the uh the, the lecture if you like with a show of hands and it was always one or two out of the class of 30 plus so, you know, it, it mirrors the general population. And you could, after 50 minutes, you could just see the shutters going down as they were glazing over because it's a difficult concept to understand. So we decided, um, Lorraine Elwood, who, who um, is the coordinator for, for the Lanx Police team, uh, myself and, and Damien got our heads together. How do we improve this? And we decided it had to be hands-on. It had to be practical. So what we do now, we... We use Martin's fishery, we've used other fisheries in, in the northwest. We've used um, Old Hull Fishery down in Cheshire. Uh, and we get a team of about 30 officers there. We split them into small groups, six or seven. And we sort of rotate them simultaneously on four stations in the morning. One of those four stations is a fishing experience. So we have Angling Trust Level 2 coaches with whips on a commercial fishery. So everyone catches, everyone catches. We've had converts from it because some of them are just, wow, I've never done this. I didn't understand fishing before. But that first session with a whip and an angling trust coach to catch them fish, it's to get them hooked on fishing. And, and with, like I say, we have had some converts on that, but it's to get them to understand the fishing world. So while they're catching that fish, they'll say, right, that fish is a, it's a carp, it's a five pound carp. It will cost so much money to replace if that is stolen from this fishery. The business model for this fishery is ABC. 
and people pay the money and, and they stock the waters and manage the waters and, and so on and so forth. The business model for a fishing club, uh, riparian owners, etc., is this. So those coaches get all that across them in that half hour session. Getting them off the, the stool and the whip is very is the most difficult part. We have to have a referee with a whistle, right? Um, so so Michael Rolls did that for us. Um, and we moved them on to the next one. So the next station might be, it was me running the station with just rod and line poaching. So basic rod and line tackle for poaching, what the law says, whose responsibility it is, et cetera, et cetera. It's another half hour session. Then we've got nets, lines and traps. Damien does that. All the nasty traps, fish traps, set lines, sometimes with like a hundred hooks on that they've pulled out before now. He covers all that, the law pertaining to that. Then we have Richard Bamford, who does otter predation and how to help clubs and, and uh, fisheries to uh, not break the law because it's a protected species, European protected species. And then in the afternoon, we'll have big building bridges um, and we have uh, Ian Doyle doing um, environment invasive and, and bio biosecurity. The feedback we've had is always excellent. The, the, the cops love it because there's only one PowerPoint which he's only got a few slides, which, he, which is building bridges. It has to be that way, really. The rest is all practical hands on. Um, that model started, we did it at the height of lockdown at Fir Tree with Lanks the first time around. We've done it with them three times now. We've done it with Cumbria. We've done it with Cheshire. Uh, and Merseyside have, have, have attended, and GMP have attended some of these. It's been rolled out across the country now because that's the way we do it, because it's the way to get non-anglers that are educated and, and and on the back of that I've, I've seen it in person much better communication links trust between the enforcement agencies so david will tell you now he does far more patrols with the police than he perhaps did before um you know those, those links are there all the time now um so i think that's probably one of our bigger achievements really probably the the two main enforcement agencies to to, to work closer together which they do in most areas. So, yeah. Well, I think as we, you know, as we, as we now come, come come to an end, really, I think first of all, it's a big thank you uh, on behalf of all the anglers, not just on the Ribble, uh, but but the wider field. I think you've just clearly demonstrated in the past 40, 45 minutes, but particularly particularly in that last little block of how things have come together since uh, as you started in twenty fifteen. As you said, there was no footsteps in the snow. So, you know, you, you've learnt it on the fly um, and you've had to tweak it. And I think it's a, it's a great story. And I think it's fabulous. And you must be mightily proud that you, you're actually leaving the position in a better place than you found it, which I think is all people, anglers, you know, when I go visit the river, I want to leave that river better than I found it. I want to leave, you know, this role that I'm doing with the Ribble Fisheries. I hope that I leave it in a better place than when I found it. Uh, and I think that's all our goals and aspirations. I think we can categorically say that you've achieved that goal. So well done. Oh, well, thanks, Nigel. And I think you'll achieve it the way you're going. Definitely with Ribble Fisheries. Um, Cheers. Yeah, it's, uh, we've got to do our best, haven't we? So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll still be a volunteer for the VBS. I'll still do stuff. I'll still put reports in and... Uh, go and help out on, on joint patrols and, and, and stuff like that. And I have enjoyed it, but it, it's like everything. It's time to move on into, a, you know, it's uh, someone else a bit younger with a bit more energy can come and do a, a, a good job, hopefully. I'm, I'm pretty and, sure. And they've got something to start with. You know, the footsteps are in the snow now. So well, they are, yeah. They've yeah. got a plan. Uh, so and no excuse them, have <laughs> As you just said, they work from the from Fir Tree Farm. They've got got it in place. Just just very finally, one of the things we've, we've touched in a number of times is reporting. So from Ribble Fisheries, uh, we obviously, you can log on to our website, uh, you can download the app uh, to your phone, which allows you to report pollution or, or predation, if you see any major numbers that we should be aware of for our, uh, our structures, but also with regarding poaching and illegal fishing. Uh, but beyond that, obviously, it is extremely key that that information gets to the likes of your cells in the EA. So, if, if, if we've touched on the on the app, but what are the methods that anglers could use 
if they go fishing today um, or, or, you know, most certainly the, the, the coast anglers after June 16th, when they're on the river or they're walking the dog, et cetera, and they see something, what's the best process of, 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 of providing that information as quickly as possible to the people that need it? Well, the Environment Agency deal with licensing and, and fishing methods uh, and, and, and pollutions. So I would advise people to have their hotline number, 0800 80 70 60, I think it is, in the, in the phone I've got it in mine. Um, <clears throat> and I would call them for any of those events. If it's, you know, a, a team netting a river for salmon, if it's a team taking carp away or stealing fish, then that's a police matter. And I would contact them. Um, if it's a crime in action, it's 999. If it's something that's, you know, you found a fish trap or something like that, then then EA. Uh, if it's not crime in action, then 101. You can do a 101 online at all forces now, which allows you to take your time and uh, and put it in. The EA do have, um, the, 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 they're working on other reporting methods. Um, so hopefully one day that will come in with the EA where you'll be able to put it on an email. I can email them only because we've got that agreement, but but nationally it's not it's not really there yet, but I can put videos on and, and photographs on. Um, you know, the EA uh, is the reporting agency. We we gain intelligence. So if you you know if you want to drop me a line or, or phone me, by all means do, but I would always advise to report to the EA first. Um, we can't circumnavigate their systems. It's like your system. Is a, it's an excellent system, but you'd be the first person to say you need to report it to the EA if it's a live crime in action. Um, yeah, I think you know it's good. something that we, we we touched on, wasn't it? That uh, particularly in the, in the crime elements, what I would 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 say, particularly in pollution, um, get it to the EA in the fastest way possible, then report it to ourselves using the app that's the way i would recommend it yeah i think um, right. and and the example i would give to that is that we all know or most of us will know the success that pickering anglers had over kunzi beck and how that was achieved was he rung it into the the environment agency he got it logged but what tends to happen there is that it gets lost in a silo if it's a low level incident so what he was doing in this specific incident, he was then emailing to follow it up so we had an audit trail. What the app enables us to have is an audit trail. Um, Same with our with PBS reporting site. Yeah, there. It, it stays there forever. He's having that audit trail. And as you just said, it allows you to pick up hotspots. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it, that's really important. We, as Ribble Fisheries, as the, the Angling Trust and yourselves will have, we have regular meetings. We we meet uh, as a, at a formal structure uh, once once every twelve weeks, uh, but we do have you know obviously various means of communication. But every twelve weeks, and if there's particularly some some sort of incidents that we just want to follow up on, we're able to have that information, and we can you know pre warn the environment agency that we're going to ask a question about incident reference X. Uh, and 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 they are more than helpful to try and uh, provide any any answers, and and if we can help in any way, that's what we try and achieve. So well, um, I know you've got another month, so um, I'm not too sure when we'll get this out. Hopefully, it will just after Easter. So you know, if I don't see you before, uh, have a great retirement. And as I say, on behalf of all the Northwest anglers, but particularly the Ribble Catchment anglers. Thank you very much for the work you've done. And and also thanks to the, the volunteers as well uh, who are out there, you know, in the rain, which they've been doing a lot of over winter. Uh, yeah, they're, in the cold, they're great. in the snow. So great effort to all, all those all those bodies. They're, they're great. They don't get paid. They are purely volunteers and, you know, work-life balance. When they can fit in a patrol, they will do. Um, they're, they're, they're brilliant people. We've got all kinds of volunteers from all kinds of backgrounds. So, yeah, we will be recruiting. So if anyone is interested, particularly the Cumbria area, because I'm a bit short up there. Be more right, than... So, yeah, because, this, you know, obviously we're going to put it in and it'll be shared across and, and sent across and hopefully through our partners with Northwest Fisheries. So Ribble Fisheries fits into Northwest Fisheries. 
and we can drive that out so we can we can get it done. Hopefully, we can get a few more volunteers on the bank. So, thank you very much. All the best, Thanks, and uh, I'll Take speak care. to you soon. Yeah. Cheers, David. Thanks Take care. Cheers, now. Cheers.